Hi, I'm Melissa Cobb, come fly with AOPA. This week, an up close look at an Iditarod airplane, virtual reality for airports, and a modern day barnstorming pilot. AOPA keeps flying safe, accessible, and fun by protecting your freedom to fly. We are the most trusted one-stop resource for all things related to general aviation. Become an AOPA pilot today. Dallas CV recently won his sixth Iditarod, and while much of the focus is on the musher and the dogs themselves, there's a huge infrastructure uh, for support that goes into it, and it includes aviation. We give you an up-close walk around of a Cessna 180 in the Iditarod Air Force. My name is Ed Cornfield. I live in Anchorage, Alaska. This is my Cessna 180. It's a 1955 airplane. They started making the Cessna 180s in 1953, so it's just two years after, uh, after the first Cessna 180s were made. So the skis are, um, they're 3,000, that's the displacement for the weight. This is kind of a typical ski setup for straight skis, it means you take the wheels off and you put skis on instead of the wheels. And obviously there are other, other uh, options where you can have wheels and skis, retractable and penetration skis. So what I've been doing for the last few days, so we're in sort of like the middle of the race where um, between the Alaska Range and the Yukon River. So this is sort of like the interior, the central, uh, much colder than the coast and a lot more snow. We've been supplying places like Rhone, Nikolai, Takatna, Ofer, and Cripple. And then pretty soon we're gonna start Ruby and Galena. Uh, so I've been going back and forth and dropping off people and supplies, veterinarians, race officials, and comms people. And uh, now, because the, uh, all the mushers have left Roan heading this way, now we're starting to uh, take all the stuff back up that we, we dropped off at Roan, cleaning it up, putting it back in the original condition that it was in before we got there, cleaning all the trash up and everything, and taking all the uh, volunteers out. So just finishing that at Roan Roadhouse uh, checkpoint. We'll have a longer story about Iditarod flying coming up in the future. If you have Apple Vision Pro, be sure to check out Four Flight Voyager on it if you haven't already. AOPA Senior Vice President of Media and Marketing, Colin Stagnito, gives us a first look. What Four Flight Voyager is, is it's something for aviation enthusiasts to look through the Apple Vision Pro device at an airport um, and really, you're looking at an airport on a disc, and you're seeing airplanes come and go. And uh, I understand it's a lot of fun. I can't wait to try it. We've got a, uh, American Airlines 2951 landing at DCA. That's amazing. All right, so looks like he's going straight into runway one over the river. All right. This is one of my favorite airports because you can see uh, if they're coming in runway one, it's the Mount Vernon visual. Yep. If it's a nice day, uh, one nine, it, it's the, the river visual. And so it's, it's really cool to see the turns and everything like that. Oh, so he disappeared, so I guess he landed too. O'Hare's also great That's too. That's exactly yeah. what I was going to do, all right. <laughs> so there's a, sort of a data card mm -hmm. that is following the Kalita airplane mm -hmm. as, as it's landing here. Mm -hmm. There's a, The one just to the right of that, that's three lines. Yep. You can tap on that and okay. you can pull up the recent airports you've okay, been so to. Okay, so there's Telluride. Mm -hmm. Which is fantastic LAX. to get the terrain as yeah, well. Yeah, let's, let's, let's do that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just that's, seeing that change. I, you know, that reminds me of how flat and boring Illinois was. <laughs> 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 I am a fan of FlightAware and FlightRadar24 and Live ATC and uh, YouTube Live videos. And in a way, this brings all that together. You can watch Colin's full review on our YouTube channel. A solar eclipse is coming up on April 8th, and AOPA has created a content pack for Four Flight that will let you plot the path of totality so you can determine what airports are nearby in case you want to fly out for a viewing party. And we got the path lines and the totality times from NASA data. AOPA's Eric Rush walks us through how to install the content pack. Installing the Four Flight content pack only takes a few short minutes. Let's take a look at how to do it. First, make sure you're using the device where you have ForeFlight installed. This could be your iPad or your iPhone. Next, use the Safari web browser to navigate to the AOPA webpage we created to help install the content pack. On this page, you'll find a link to download and install the content pack in ForeFlight. Now, 
simply tap the Download to Foreflight button to initiate the process. This will launch the Foreflight app and you may see a message indicating that the content pack will be downloaded. The AOPA Eclipse content pack will then appear in the Foreflight downloads list. That's all there is to installing the content pack. Now, let's take a look at how to see it in Foreflight. On the map screen, tap the Layers button in the top left corner. At the bottom of the right column, you should see a new layer named AOPA Eclipse 2024. Tap this layer to turn it on. So that's all there is to installing the content pack. Start planning your 2024 Eclipse trip today. Here in Ohio, we are pretty excited about the eclipse because the path of totality cuts across our state and it even occurs during uh, some students' spring breaks. So it's a great opportunity for families and kids to get out and enjoy it together. But if your spring break plans include flying yourself to the Bahamas or the Caribbean, AOPA has you covered with data there as well. We've recently updated our pilot guides for the Bahamas and the Caribbean. So the guides include airport data and the layout of each island, customs and immigration information, information about the local culture and food, the best way to get around while you're there on the island, and tips from other pilots for where to stay and fun things to do. You can purchase the guides from our website. We'll drop a link to that in the description below. In industry news, the FAA has granted an exemption to Textron E-Aviation that will allow its Velis Electro to be certified, operated, and maintained as a special light sport aircraft. That means flight school owners and operators can use it in their training fleet. So the Velis Electro was originally developed by Pipistrel, and then Textron bought it in 2022. So it was the first certified electric aircraft. It has been uh, in Europe and it's been doing flight training in Europe and other areas before coming to the US. And if you wonder what it's like to fly it, check out the video on our YouTube channel. AOPA Senior Director of Media, Sarah Diener, took it up for a flight and shares her thought in that video. And earlier this year, we reported that New Vision Aviation, that's a flight school in California, had received an FAA Special Light Sport Aircraft exemption to provide training in its Pipistrel Alpha Electro fleet. And so these electric aircraft, they offer lower operating costs, emission-free training platforms, and they're quieter than your traditional piston engine fleet aircraft. So it could also help reduce noise complaints at airports as well. You can read more about the Velis Electro on our website. We'll drop a link to that in the description below. Finally this week, we introduce you to Dewey Davenport. He's a modern day barnstormer. I am actually a full-time corporate pilot. You know, I fly for uh, NetJets Aviation. I've been there 15 and a half years. And you know that has allowed me to uh, progress and buy the airplanes. The aircraft this, uh, behind me is a, a, a D-25 new standard. It's a 1930 aircraft. Uh, it's my second biplane. I, I also have a 1929 Travel Air 4000. But uh, this aircraft is very unique because it was designed and built just for given rides. When I built this hangar, I built this hangar for a new standard in dreams to own a new standard. The door is much larger than any hangar because the travel air has like a 33 foot wing. This has a 45 foot wing. So I made sure my hangar door was large enough to fit a new standard because my dream was to have the king of the barnstormer, which is the new standard. I travel with this aircraft. I go to festivals, balloon festivals, sometimes air shows, fly-ins, and also I just do some fixed base operation also, but I do travel with the airplane very much like they did 100 years ago. And that's what barnstorming was and that it, what is, it is today. I'm taking a model that was designed 100 years ago and why I call myself the modern day barnstormer because I'm probably the most modern day barnstormer. I, I use a credit card machine off of my cell phone. I can land in a hay field and use a credit card machine. You know, back then they didn't have that kind of technology. My marketing spans mostly on social media through YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. I do a lot of uh, target marketing, so I, I put marketing campaigns out in that area, uh, local towns, to let them know that I'm barnstorming through the area. 
and it works very, very well. I'm able to reach thousands of people and then they can contact me or go to my website and get more information. Flying to events with multiple airplanes, it's, it's always great because we're flying formation, loose formations and having fun. It's really unbelievable to be honest with you. We're flying over cities and things and in airplanes that's 70, 80 years old. And when we land, we say, hey, did you see this or did you see that? And we did, we got to share that experience, two different aircraft. Ever since I was a kid, I, you know, I was probably in junior high. I tell my parents, I want to own a grass strip, have an old biplane, and I want to give rides in a biplane with a radio engine. And, and that's what I always dreamed about doing. The people you meet all over the country, all over the world, to be honest with you, they come in from you know visiting uh, local sites here, and they take a biplane ride to get this experience. But you know, you meet thousands of people with thousands of different stories, and you get to share one story, which is this airplane. And it's kind of my job to share it with people because it has a, a history that you know a lot of antique airplanes. This, this is 93 years old, but a lot of antique airplanes have great stories and if you know the story it really helps people understand the significance of why you have it and why you share it and that's one of the loves I just if I can take someone up and let them experience just a little bit of the thrill that I get out of flying and lifting off the ground it it's really worth every penny Dewey, I'm so glad you're able to live out your childhood dream, and I'm sure you are just inspiring other kids to dream about aviation as well. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Fly with AOPA. Be sure to like and subscribe to stay up to date on all our latest videos. This week, we leave you with some wonderful flying footage from Andrew Miranda. So this was shot of him landing his 1986 mall at Wilson Bar, Idaho in 2016. He was doing an individual refresher training with McCall Mountain Canyon Flying Seminars. And I've actually had the opportunity to fly with that school as well. It's a truly wonderful program. Be sure to send in your favorite flying videos. You just might see them on an upcoming show. And if you're not already an AOPA pilot, we'd love for you to join us. Just click on the link at the end of this video to learn more about our trial membership. We'll see you next week.